Good morning, Facebook, YouTube, and everybody else watching this video. I'm Derek Lipsky, coming to you live from my office. Today, we're going to go over tip number six in the 10-part series of why sellers need to keep their home on the market during the holidays. Now, um, what's going on is, is, is buyers are more emotional during the holidays, so you're more likely to get your price during the holiday season. So, you know, selling real estate involves emotion. Buyers have the highest emotion during holidays. Holidays evoke emotions. So if we're going to have a chance of selling our home, it's going to be people walking home feeling like they want to have Christmas Day, thinking they want to have Thanksgiving, cutting the turkey in front of the fireplace, open presents with little Jimmy in front of the tree. These are emotions. We can use these emotions to sell. And since, there, like I said, there isn't a lot of homes to choose from, when you get people looking at that, they're very serious about coming out looking at homes. They see a home. They're going to start thinking about stuff like that. And that's what you want to capitalize on. That's your best chance. Not just spring, waiting for flowers, the pool to be open. The, the daisies to come up. I mean, we want to imagine people thinking of this home looking awesome. There's less homes out there. It's Christmas time. Who comes out in the snow? These buyers are more emotional, and that's going to help us sell. Anybody who sells, anybody at all will tell you, emotions help sell every time. Now, they also hurt sometimes if they're bad emotions, but if they're good, warm, holiday feeling emotions, that's what you want. So that's a good tip on, on why you should keep the home on the market during the holidays. Now, we're going to go to viewer mail. Viewer mail today. Viewer mail Monday. Now, the first rule about viewer mail Monday is we don't talk about viewer mail Monday. Okay. LB22 says, what's with the dog at the end of all your videos? Uh, I don't know. I thought it was kind of goofy. I'm kind of goofy sometimes. I like to put goofy stuff in there. I thought it was cool, so I put it in there. It really, doesn't, it's not my dog. It doesn't mean anything. Um, oh, we got a new, a little, little, little segment here. What I like to call the Johnny Carson show. This is a question from think tank. I'm going to guess the answer before I even open it. What is price? Think tank one writes, my home hasn't sold in 500 days. What's wrong? Five, think tank, 500 days on the market, you, you, it's got to be some kind of issue. There's usually only four reasons why a home doesn't sell. Price, condition, location, and broker marketing services. Now, if your home's being shown, you see it on the market, they're getting people in there, your services aren't too bad. I mean, you get you get people through there. Location, could be on a main road, next to an airport, next to a train, I don't know. That could be a cause. How do you correct that? Price. Condition, could not be that great, could be bad compared to everything else. Um, you know, it might not be in the best condition. How do you correct that? Price. Number three, price. It could be price. And 95% of these times I come to the houses, it's always price. People don't want to accept that. I know. Everyone wants their price. Their home's different. My home's different than the rest of the homes on the planet. I get that. And, and I say that with joking because the reality is a lot of homes are different out there. But the reality is they all offer three, four, five bedrooms, two, one, two, three baths, one garage, two garage, finished basement, not finished basement. There's slight differences. But the reality is people aren't looking for unique homes in this market. They're looking for the best price one that suits most their needs. So uh, think tank, try to adjust the price. Ask your broker what he thinks the price is going to cost it to sell in the next 90 days. And then go to that. Um, or take it off the market and hold it. Keep it. I mean, you know, it's, it, you're the highest bidder. Keep the home off the market so you don't get in the way of other homes that need to sell. Because if you're not motivated, you won't do what's right. Or if you can't do it because you don't have enough equity, talk about a short sale. Okay. Uh, last question here. Uh, you seem to be funny. Oh, phones now 31 says, you seem to be funny. Any funny stories this year? Um, I didn't know this was a stand-up routine, but sure. Um, I try to make funny things happen all the time. Um, all right, so this weekend I was uh, at my house uh, after I got home. I was watching the kids in the neighborhood ride their bikes, and uh, my boys are riding their bikes. And, you know, we put helmets, knee pads, uh, elbow pads. I mean, these guys are, like, uh, you know, padded up to, to the nines. Gloves. Uh, they got the special pads on the handlebars, on the seat. I mean, they got everything for protection now. But when I was little, we didn't have helmets. If you wore a helmet, you got beat up. I mean, it wasn't like that, you know. So what we used to do was... Uh, you're lucky if you had one of those little sponges on the bar to, if you fell off to protect your manhood. But that's about as far as we got for protection and, uh, out there. And what we used to do, and I'm thinking to myself, going, I'm surprised these kids aren't doing it. We used to get cement blocks and like stick them in the road and find a piece of plywood or anything we could to angle it up to it. And the whole idea was to ride as fast as you can, hit this wood, and see how high you could go. 
And so I remember one time I'm doing it with my brother, and he was the first one, he's the first one going it. And as he goes down the hill and hits the wood and goes up, he flips over the handlebars and he's going, What now? And I'm like, I don't know. And he ended up hitting a mailbox, you know, <laughs> boom. And so next thing we know, we got about eight, nine-year-old paramedics rushing to the scene to see if he's all right. <laughs> We're like, what do we do? And my friend's like, get some leaves. So we all grab leaves. We pat his shirt and they're trying to get his arm stable. And uh, that was actually the easy part. The hard part was going in and telling my mother what had happened. And, you know, and they're like, oh, you got to go with your brother. You got to go. So I had to rush in the house as sort of the point man and break the news to my mother. And I'm like, <laughs> Hey, Mom, uh, no, everything's okay. Everything's okay. And, and, and you know she bought that. Oh, yeah, everything's okay. I rush in. And I'm like, uh, uh, you, you remember, remember Lenny, uh, my brother? And she's like, yeah. Uh, I was like, you know how his arm used to, you know, bend like this? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, it, it doesn't do that anymore right now. So um, since you said you were going out anyways to go grab some milk and, you know, butter and stuff, I figured, well, we all figured that... Maybe we should drop him off at the hospital and get him checked out because it doesn't look that great. But we think he's okay, but, you know, since we already looked at him, but you might want to get him checked out. And uh, I don't know if that was funny or not, but <laughs> it was just something I remember during my childhood, what had happened. But, uh, hey, anyways, uh, tune in tomorrow for another tip. And remember, I don't do this for fun. I do it to be number one. Call, leave questions, comments. I answer them every Monday, 508-326-5320. You see my website, all my links below this site here. So click on that, open up, leave me messages. I'll talk to you later.